I'm going to start by just explaining the concepts and then in the second half of the video, we'll put all that knowledge to use. If I take this sheet of paper and roll it up like so, I've technically got a sleeve. But of course that wouldn't be a very good fitting sleeve because it's pointing straight out and as soon as we put our arm down, there'd be all kinds of bulk and folding happening underneath the armpit. So what we do is we take that sleeve, which is a cylinder, tilt it at the angle that we want, and then we cut off the end. Boom. Just like that. I go ahead and unravel said sleeve, and that's how we end up with that curve you often see at the top of a sleeve. If I make this curve at the top here shallower, which of course reduces the angle of my sleeve. So depending on what kind of an angle I want on my sleeve, I can increase or decrease this curve. But it does come with consequences. The length of this deeper curve is going to be longer than the length of this shallow curve. And that sleeve needs to fit in our armhole. And if this curve at the top changes here, well, it's not going to fit in our armhole anymore. So what I do is I adjust the width of my sleeve to either increase or decrease the length of this curve here to match my armhole. So let's say, for example, I made this curve deeper because I want the sleeve to point down more. I decrease the width of my sleeve to decrease the length of the curve at the top here. Alternatively, if I decided to go shallower with this curve, I'd want to increase the width of my sleeve to make this length match my armhole. To really drive this idea home, here's a bunch of curves of different depths but the exact same length. You notice how that changes the width of the sleeve? Now let's apply this to the real world. Say, a t-shirt. We want it to be real comfortable, often a bit more loose fitting, it's easy breezy, we can move a lot, wonderful. So in that case, we want the curve at the top to be quite shallow, which of course means we need to bring the sleeve out, which increases the circumference, for folks like myself who like to be a little more formal, it means we also want our clothes a little bit more fitted, which means our sleeves are pointing straighter down, so that means an increased curve at the top. We reduce the width of that sleeve, of course, reduces the mobility a little bit more. Uh, the most extreme example would be a formal coat, which has quite the curve at the top, the sleeves are slimmed down a lot. The benefit of this being that the arms sit right down by the sides. There's no bulky fabrics and folding happening anywhere around the arm or armpits. Drawback being, of course, that there's no functionality. Lifting up and down makes them a little bit uncomfortable. Now you may have noticed that this sleeve is perfectly straight, and that's not very likely. Chances are likely that we're going to want some sort of a taper on it. That, of course, introduces a little bit of a point here, which we don't want. I start by drawing in the taper or angle I want going inwards on my sleeve. Using a 90 degree ruler or something that has a perfect square edge, I line it up with the side here and then I find the point where the curve connects and just straighten it out, like so. And I just snip off that little bit on the edge. And voila, a nice, clean, consistent continuation all the way around. Oh boy, editing corn, we sure do have uh, some visual consistency challenges in this video, eh? <laughs> Good luck with that one. Congratulations! 
we now understand the basic concept of a sleeve. But hold on, uh, I imagine some of you might be thinking, that's a rather clean looking curve at the top. What I've seen looks a lot more wobbly. And yes, you're correct. Let me explain. For this, we need to look at our anatomy and specifically how our shoulders and arms are turned in slightly forward. I mean, we do all our work in front of us. It's <laughs> quite hard to get back there. And the way that translates into the pattern, we cut a little deeper on that curve in the front half of the sleeve to remove some of that unwanted extra fabric. And then as we make our way around to the back, we make this curve a bit shallower so that we have more fabric in this back area here to accommodate the forward movement without too much pulling and things. First, the even curved sleeve, and it points straight out and down. But then we switch over to this new one, and you see how it's pointing forward or towards me a little bit? This is something you're more likely to see on a more formal garment, something a bit more structured, where small amounts of fabrics are gonna make a difference. Uh, looser fitting garments, stretchy fabrics. This is negligible and uh, doesn't necessarily need to be done. These shears have been a handy tool for the last five years. It's a company run by this lovely husband and wife duo. You get your very own pair, this here URL, and you'll be supporting me at the same time. Thank you. On with the video. The sleeve is of course just one half of the pattern. The other half is the arm hole, and we need to understand its impact on the whole kit and caboodle. So for that, let's once again, Observe our anatomy. Our shoulders are sloped, and then where the shoulder meets the arm, we want to cut back in again so that we can make our way underneath the armpit. The back is the same sort of an idea, but we do, of course, have more surface area in the back here because, as you recall, our arms go forward. So not only is the surface area at the top, of the back here. We've also got that little chunk of meat that makes up the wing of the back. This is our front pattern piece, armhole here. We've got a sloped shoulder. We're cutting back in and underneath the armpit. Of course, when it's laying flat, it looks like a hook, but when this will be a sewn garment and being worn, it's gonna flip down and around like that. And we want this corner here to be a 90 degree angle because when we join it with the back pattern piece, we want a nice smooth transition from one to the other. And you'll see here that the curve is much shallower, which adds in more fabric to cover that extra surface area and meat wing we got going on. But also we make the back piece taller by bringing the shoulder up, because again, there's more surface area that needs to be covered to go around and over the top of the shoulder to meet in the middle with the front piece. Once it all comes together, it'll look something like that. See how there's more fabric in the back? Here again, we're gonna see more variance between the front and back panel on a more fitted garment, on a more structured garment, and then something loose, something stretchy, chances are there might not even be very much difference at all, if any. Okay, let's put all this knowledge to use. I find it's best to start with the armhole. That way we can get that just right before we work on the sleeve. I wrap a measuring tape around my arm to decide how big I want that hole to be. These are my stitch lines, because eventually that'll get sewn there like that. These down here like that. 
And so I want that measurement that I just took to be the equivalent of the length from here all the way up to here, and then from here up to there. And the way I measure those curves is I just take my measuring tape, put it on its side, and then proceed to just walk it out along that line to get the measurements. From here, I can play around with the shape of that armhole however I want until I get it mm, just so for my body. Now, it's important to not have it too far in the curve because that's how you're going to get pulling on the sleeve and it's going to be tight and uncomfortable underneath. If it's too far out, it's going to droop off. For now, we're focusing on just a classic sleeve. And you can do whatever you want. You could bring this curve up if you wanted to. You can make the curves deeper. You can make them shallower. Whatever you want to adjust so that it fits your body. Let's say that you like the size of your armhole, but you find that your garment is just too tight. The obvious answer is to widen the garment and the chest here, but of course that would then make the armhole bigger, bigger sleeve, we don't want that. So what I would do is I would walk out the edge of the armhole to find out the exact amount. Once I have my measurement, I would then align that with the top here find out exactly where that hits the new line and voila I have my amount right there I can then proceed to draw that in I would remeasure it just to make sure it's right fiddle around as need be and voila do that for the back as well armhole stays the same chest gets bigger I've got a lovely fitting garment. Something interesting to observe is that as a sleeve points down more, it gets slimmer. We know that, but the armhole actually gets bigger and vice versa for a sleeve that points straighter out. It seems counterintuitive, but what's going on is that greater angle makes for more of a surface area that needs to be connected to. Once we got our armhole just as we want, we're then going to measure once more from here to here and there to there because those measurements are going to determine the length of this curve at the top here. You may have noticed I have not been offering any specific measurements and this has been very intentional. My aim here is to illustrate that it's a matter of just learning the principles and then from there it's entirely up to you. You get to design your pattern how you want to fit the way you like. If you're finding this video to be useful and like my content in general, consider supporting me over on Patreon. Now, what do you get in exchange for supporting me on Patreon? Well, you can get access to these videos early and ad-free. And I lost my train of thought. Now, what do you get? Over on Patreon, well, you get access to these videos early and ad-free. Uh, you can join the group chat over on Discord, where you can engage with other like-minded folks, share things that you're working on, get help with projects that you're struggling with. And I make an effort to reply to everyone over there. Or if you really want to offer a lot of support, you can be a top-tier supporter and get your name in the videos. Now, some of you probably aren't looking to do this on a regular basis, but if you want to offer one-time support, there's folks who make donations over at this here URL, and those are greatly appreciated as well. Finally, if you continue to watch, you're looking at the YouTube ads, that also offers support. So, thanks for listening. Editing corn, let's get ad corn out of here. Keep it moving. This is my center line of the sleeve. And then this line is going to determine the height of my curve. I get to decide how high or low I want that to be. It's based on my style of sleeve. This is my front pattern piece here. And I take that measurement from here to here. 
Using a ruler, I'm going to draw a straight line from the top here down to there, matching that same length. In my case, it just happens to be perfectly fitting to the sheet. It's like I planned this out. And then I do the same thing with this back line here, taking that measurement and drawing a straight line across down to meet there. I'd like to point out that my center line is dead center here. There's a chance that yours might be a little bit to the left or the right. Don't worry if you see this, it's very much influenced by the length of the curves of your front and back armholes. I find the center and I mark that spot on both of them. That's where my line is going to cross over. And I just start sketching that in. There's no exact science here, but I just sketch loosely until I get it in a way that looks right. You can decide if you want them to be even, if it's a looser garment, a t-shirt. You can do that lopsided one if you're doing a more fitted garment, like a button-up or something like that. You decide. A good way to learn how to draw this curve at the top here is to do what I'm doing. Use a thicker construction paper, draw out a curve, cut it out, and then roll it up, and then just look at it from the side. Does that seem like a nice curve? If not, make some adjustments, tweaks, until eventually you got the curve the way you want. I've added in the sides of my sleeve and slightly adjusted here for the nice 90 degree angle. Finally, I've marked in my stitch line, and if I'm doing a t-shirt or something stretchy, I want the length of this to be basically equivalent to the length of these two added together. And if it isn't, I can bring this in or out to adjust the length as needed. If I'm doing something more fitted or structured like a button-up, I of course want this line to be a quarter of an inch up to an inch longer in the most extreme examples. Then these two lines added together because we're going to use a technique known as easing in to put the sleeve into the armhole. A technique which I shall demonstrate now. I've sewn a simple stitch inside of the seam allowance on the cap of my sleeve. I made my stitch length about half an inch longer on the sleeve than I did in the two pattern pieces. And I'm just grab this one thread here, and then I simply pull on it so it bunches up the fabric like that. Hold that there, and then just even out that bunching around the cap. I'm going to do that on both sides. Again, even that out nicely. And you see how that sort of curls up the top of the sleeve? I align that with my sleeve hole. I sew that sleeve on from side to side. I can then pull out that initial stitch that we did. Give that a little bit of a pressing. And there we go. We've eased in a sleeve. If you don't ease in a sleeve, that's how you end up with this kind of wrinkling, because then the sleeve has to pull too much to fit in here. I too uh, continue to learn. And that is all the information on drafting a basic sleeve pattern. Uh, if there's anything I want you to take from this, it's that there's some simple rules to follow. And then beyond that, it's entirely up to you and how you want to craft it to fit your body or whatever project you're working on. My name's Cornelius Quiring. Happy drafting and sewing.